Intervju med Kevin Stott presenteras av Kentucky Ridersbrand.se KW Anytime Horses uh, If you think about a round that was the best round of your life so far, the one you remember, almost you can almost feel it. Which one is that? It was, um, I think, at the last week in um, Lexington, and uh, I rode Sylvanazer, and uh, for the speed class the first day I had a really bad one. Uh, I had one fourth and then one stop. I finished 19th, so really far away. So it was nearly impossible to come back to the top four for the individual final. And uh, and then the next day and the day after, it was the um, uh, final uh, competition for the team. And uh, I had to ride last, already the first one, to still to be qualified for the second round. And then in the second round, uh, to get a medal. And, and then, yeah, Silvana was double clear. And it was really... A completely opposition between the first day and I then, remember this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, um, for my feeling, it was the best one I had because um, I had to give everything for um, for my team, and it was not, uh, you know, uh, uh, my own success. It was a success for the whole team, mm -hmm. and I had to fight. Uh, I, I couldn't be selfish. I had to fight f really for the team, mm. and that, yeah, was um, a great feeling. Feeling this medal, and when you speak, uh, once I was speaking a lot with uh, Rodrigo Pessoa, mm. and okay, this guy is amazing. He has the most success everywhere, uh, three times winning the final World Cup and World Champion, Olympic Champion. When but when you ask him where he had the most uh, uh, adrenaline during competition, it was always uh, by team. Mm. And uh, I'm a little bit the same, uh, for sure. You, you, you like your, your individual success, but the one you can share with uh, another riders is really the ones uh, who stays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, have you ever had a horse that you kind of, can you call it, misjudged and you? sold it and you re realized that maybe you should have kept it was better than you thought? No, not when I sold, but when I tried. Mm. I tried um, one year ago, uh, um, eight years old, uh, and um, it was uh, one guy uh, I was working with and I really trust was riding this horse at this time and he called me and he said I think and I, I have an amazing horse you have to come to try him and I tried the stallion and he was really jumping on the right and uh, he had a good energy but uh, I didn't feel um, so much scope and it was uh, the end of my relationship with my ex-sponsor and I knew that I did uh, already many mistakes with buying some wrong horses mm -hmm. so I decided that the horse was too expensive for, for this and now is um, the horse riding by the Mar Moroccan guy, Abde Abdel Kebir Wada, mm. uh, horse called uh, Quigley Kreisker. Yeah. And I think one, he has just nine now. I think it's an amazing horse and uh, he has all the scope and um, uh, I judged him really, be really bad. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a big mistake I did, I think. Uh, a lot of riders have problems with their backs and sore muscles and stuff. Do you have? Yeah, a lot. You do? Yeah, um, since one year uh, I have uh, three hernies and uh, to ride it's quite okay. To be sit it's, um, it's good, mm. especially close to you, so it's okay. <laughs> I don't know why for me. And, uh, but uh, um, to stand up and to walk, uh, it was really painful, especially in the legs and everything. Mm. And I tried many osteopaths, many uh, yeah, tablets, many injections, just cocaine I didn't try yet, <laughs> but uh, I tried uh, nearly everything else. And normally um, I had to be operated uh, end of this year, just after Geneva in December, but um, I found um, 
um, uh, therapist, a girl, uh, problem, she's in America, you have to leave uh, Monday to Wellington, oh, gosh. three days just yeah. before Paris, just, and she's working on the muscles, and yeah. it helps me, it yeah, does, yeah? yeah, yeah, really, really a lot. So you're better now? Yeah, I'm really better. That's amazing. And I don't take any tablets anymore, and I don't need any injections, so no, I really feel better, but during one year when you can't do any other sports, I like to play badminton or I like to do many things and mm. each step you are doing it's like uh, it's not a crazy pain but it's all day yeah. uh, every time so yeah and now yeah I'm living again perfect that's good um, so how important is your team the French team or my team working? The team for working around you. Oh, it's my, it's everything. Mm. And uh, they are, for me, the best. And I know they have bad character, they are a strong person. Uh, but yeah, uh, I really try to work with the same person since a long time. My vet, I'm working with uh, the same one since 15 years. Uh, the grooms, I know it's really something. Uh, complicated and hard but um, normally they stay uh, five six seven years and mm. then they stay if they come with me all around the world by shows and then after they stay uh, at the stables at home like stable manager or something like this but um, I'm not one who is changing uh, uh, the person of my team no. like this since uh, I'm 18 years old I decide to have my own company especially to uh, I could propose my service to different stables, but I wanted to bring my, my own team. Mm. And uh, I know if uh, to stay to the top sport, uh, I have to move again. A few of, uh, of uh, a big part of my team will follow me. Oh, oh I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Well, tomorrow you will write the top ten. Yeah. Um, how do you prepare and how do you focus before a, an important class? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's um, one more difficult uh, this class of the top ten because uh, yeah, rider are amazing at this time and uh, it's difficult because uh, it's a really important class but in the middle of uh, huge schedules of mm. shows you know mm. it was Doha last week it will be Paris Geneva London Michael and following. And uh, yeah, f you mm, with this top ten final, you really realize that if you want to stay to the top, you need many Grand Prix horses. Mm. Not, uh, um, I think, five, ten years ago to have one, it was already good. Uh, three, four years ago, I realized that I had three, and I was number one at this time. It was good to have three, but now three is not enough, mm. and it's why you have to to build a good system, to have some owners and sponsors who can really trust you or trust your your work. And uh, so this top 10, uh, I decided to bring a, a nine years old mare. She has not full experience, she, but she's French, she's fighting a lot. And uh, she, she, I'm an outsider with this mare here, but um, I like this feeling mm. and it, it helps me to fight more. Mm. So we will see. Uh, well, <laughs> many athletes have this compulsory behavior. They have to do something special before they go into the arena. Do you have something like that? No, because before I say that uh, I plat my horse three times yeah. uh, each side, but uh, I'm not doing it so much because since one year it's not working well, so <laughs> I have to find another one. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give all the young riders around you that want, want dreams about living your life? The most important thing I see is, is the motivation you give to your work. Mm. Because um, with horses, you, you can't do it if you are not giving 100%. Uh, you have to wake up early, you have, there are animals, they are working each day. Mm. No holidays, that's why no vacation. <laughs> and no, and uh, Sometimes you are completely desperate and you have still to, uh, to follow your way. And already many times uh, I had doubt to continue to ride or not. But okay, you sleep on this and the next morning you, you know that you can do something else than riding. Mm. 
So, but the motivation is really important because it's a, it's really a hard job. It's a fantastic patient, and this sport is, yeah, really complicated. And the competition is uh, is hard. Not uh, not the classes, I mean, but the competition mm -hmm. already to to find your your team, to find some horses, to find people to to buy them and to help you to to ride them in competition and so everything is uh, is hard but it's a little bit uh, good resume and, uh, um, and a good uh, part of the story of, uh, of, of the life mm. because the life is like this it's not easy if you want to to become someone or someone and uh, for sure you have to be motivated all the time when uh, when you are in a good period it's easy yeah? mm. but uh, when you're a little bit down, you have still to, to give the same energies and mm. when you're at the top. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> imagine that you're playing cards with your friends and you're losing several times. Yeah. Are, you, are you a bad loser? Yeah. You are? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> if I have to be honest, yeah, I'm a bad loser. Uh, but um, I am... I'm playing ping pong or badminton or uh. many different things and uh, once uh, I was living in the east of France for many years and uh, I had some, uh, there are still some friends but uh, older than me and uh, he's um, nearly 50 and it's nice family and all the time I, I went to, to their place and we had dinner, drinking vodka and then playing uh, ping pong. <laughs> and. Um, he, he told me once that uh, it's something special from the sports person. It's they never lose <laughs> before the last point. No. And sometimes he, he, he could have a big advance. Uh, um, I was never um, stopping fighting. No. And uh, I think it's not to be uh, good in many sports, but. I'm a bad loser because you don't like to lose. It doesn't matter what you are doing, no. and uh, and you really fight until the end. So I'm not a really. Bad, I don't like to lose, but what when I'm losing, when it happens, okay, it it's is done. Okay. It's done. You won't get angry. No, no. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, the horse that Malin Barad used to have in Sweden, we call him the fox, Raven. Yeah. What do you call him at home? I guess it's not I, I, I don't say because it's a um, French surname and uh, it's really ridiculous. But uh, no, I, he has uh, he has really many surname. Uh, he was like adopted. He's not a horse. He's like uh, a friend. He has, yeah. You can't pass uh, without touching him, without speaking to him. It's stupid because uh, he had to learn French, so it was complicated. <laughs> but, uh, no, he's, uh, he's like a real person. He is, yeah, yeah he, has, uh, he is an amazing horse. Uh, he, he had um, a small injury this year, I couldn't ride him, but now he starts again uh, in two weeks in Geneva. Mm. And I hope, uh, okay, I think f if I have a chance for the WEG next year, it will be with him. Mm. He's a um, top athlete, but he's a uh, top human. He's really, yeah, full of, it's uh, Silvana, you know, she's a princess, but She's a horse. She's really. She's a mare. She's. Mm. But him, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's something different, yeah, and it's not because we are in Sweden. And uh, I could <laughs> tell that okay, he's nice. And but um, he's he has really something in plus. Yeah. Definitely. I can't tell what, but he has something in plus. But he's he's French. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's French now. Yeah. Okay, that's all we had. Yeah. Thank you so much, and big good luck for tomorrow. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.